Tonight on the Matimation Channel. Quite the show I've got in store for you this week, Manimation fans. In today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how I aquascaped a new aquarium for the better fish, Aki. If you tuned in to last week's episode, then you'll have seen Aki getting bullied off of the tiny little wussy tetra fish in Matlantis. So I decided to get a completely new tank, and in today's episode, I'll show you how I set that up. Also in today's episode, going to show you how I made a resin fish tank ornament uh, of myself as Buddha and you can see the full process of how I've done that in today's video and you're going to want to make sure you stay tuned till the end of the episode tonight Matty Mation fans because I'm going to be giving five lucky viewers the chance to win their very own Uncle Matty Buddha statue so stay tuned for that so I bought a new 25 litre tank. It's the Home 25 Aquascaping Aquarium from Superfish. I filled it with some aquarium soil and then I began to plant some dwarf grass. You can see me here uh, struggling to get it in the soil. I do normally find it floating on the surface within a couple of weeks of me planting it. So let's hope this one bears up a bit better. I've also stuck some rocks and a stick and some plants in the back there. Anyway, Aki seemed very happy in his new home, with no one to bother him anymore, no tetras in sight, and he had the whole place to himself. But if you look closely towards the back of the tank, you'll occasionally see three little me's appearing. Unfortunately, they are simply in my imagination, so I did feel I owed it to Aki to get him some real life friends. So I got these cherry shrimp. At first he did kind of chase them around a bit, but he seemed to give up pretty quick. I don't think he can really catch them. You can see him in his tank, a bit more chilled now. You can see the cherry shrimp in the back. And everything's very zen now. But I did notice that some of the cherry shrimps uh, were full of eggs. Uh, a little tip, if you're going to get cherry shrimps, and you ask the guy for all the bright red ones, chances are you're going to get a lot of women, because the males are a bit less colourful, they're more of a translucent colour. I couldn't help noticing Aki was a little off his food. After further investigation, I found what appeared to be lots of little tiny baby shrimplets. And this was all within two weeks of putting these cherry shrimps in my tank. Wondered if uh, Aki had been eating these, and uh, that might have been why he was off his food. I mean, he does kind of look a bit guilty, doesn't he? So in an effort to save them, I managed to siphon out five of the baby shrimplets and put them into this breeding box in Matlantis. Unfortunately, one of the shrimps upon entering the breeding box immediately escaped through one of these grills and has entered Matlantis, which was a little unfortunate. There's a lot of people in here who are gonna wanna eat him. Hope he does well. I wish him all the best. Chances are he's someone's tea now. Now you might remember the tetra fish weren't just fighting Aki, they were also fighting heavily amongst themselves. Highly unruly. To counteract this vicious behaviour, I took it upon myself to add these guys. They are rummy nose tetras, called so because of their red nose. And you can see them here, they're a very peaceful fish. They school very tightly and they've really chilled out the tetra. 
You can see them all here in perfect harmony with one another. Hold on to your seats, aquarium fans. I also got this new rock to replace the previous artificial one that I had in there. And here is the new lady of the tank, Tanya, the wood shrimp. Um, she seemed like a good idea in the pet shop, but since I've added her into Atlantis, uh, she kind of freaks me out a little bit, the way she uh, moves around and things. She doesn't ever really appear, I've only seen her on a couple of occasions, so I never know where she is. If you look in the foreground, you'll see her male counterpart, Wilson, who you can see here on the floor of the aquarium, searching around. He'll often stand up near the filter, as you can see he's doing here. He has four large hands, which are used as almost sort of sieves to pick bits out of the water. And I keep telling him he shouldn't play with his food, but does he listen? <laughs> does he? Heck. You can see he gets along with the catfish. This is right after I've fed them some blood worms. It's about the only time you'll see the catfish sat this still. It looks like their whiskers, or whatever you call them, have grown back a bit since getting the finer gravel, which is good. And so it seemed that all was at peace in Matlantis. Until out of nowhere, Stephen performed a savage attack on the newborn shrimplet breeding baby box. Thankfully, Stephen wasn't successful. This time. Back to an old tank favourite, Big Jimmy, had feeding time, and you can see him grabbing greedily at the fish flakes. Here's a little thing that I stuck to the inside of the tank. None of the fish can get near it because big old greedy old Jimmy it just annihilates it. I'm not sure that she actually eats any of it. Just picks it all to bits and makes a mess. Although she's got as much as she wants, she also wants all the little crumbs that come off of the bit. Keep your eye on this bit that floats upwards here. Here it comes. And she's got it. She jumped off to catch it, even though it meant jumping into the pit of catfish. These leopard catfish don't know the meaning of personal space. And we've got a new hog for the spotlight. This guy, Philip. He is a kind of snail. I had two of these snails in here after the untimely passing of the pagoda snails. And not long after adding them to the tank, I suddenly started noticing these white lumps all over the place, including on the glass of the tank. And quickly realised it was snail eggs. So hoping I don't have a full-on snail infestation, because they're nice, but I don't really want hundreds of them. And so all was well in Matlantis. Everyone was at peace and working in perfect harmony. At least for now. I realised that while Aki tolerated the shrimp, he wasn't exactly best mates with them. And I thought, who would be the best friend for a fish like Aki? Well, to tell you the answer to that, we're going to have to go over to Craft Corner. Welcome to Craft Corner. So let me tell you how I made a custom decoration for my aquarium. So a while ago, one of my friends did a 3D scan of my full body. Um, I only really needed the head, but he insisted on scanning the full body. By the way, if you are interested in getting your own body parts 3D scanned, go ahead and get in touch on the address on screen now. Hey, Matt. Oh, I'll put the link in the description down below in as well. I decided just to use the head, and so I thought the first thing I would do would be to make a mould of the 3D printed head. You can see me mixing some silicone here. The world will be my oyster, was my thinking, with my new mould of my head. So I began casting my own heads, and I thought, I need to get one of these in the fish tank. And I started imagining a mermat version of myself. I went to the pet shop to try and get a statue to stick my head on, a scuba diver or something of the like. Unfortunately, when I got to the pet shop, they seemed to all be different Buddha statues, so I got one. It wasn't until my Dremel was midway through Buddha's neck I started to wonder if this might be a bit of a disrespectful thing to do. I used epoxy clay to sculpt my 3D printed head onto the Buddha statue body and then I created myself some ears out of the epoxy clay as well. Don't try this at home kids.
I don't know about you, but I like my silicone butter smooth. So I put mine in this vacuum chamber. You can see me putting a little bit of silicone just around the fiddly bits like the ear holes. Twelve hours later I proceeded to remove the mould from the mould box thing I made with a cup. Upon removing this statue, the epoxy clay broke on the neck and I was left with the head remaining inside the mould. The ears with the holes in had become problematic as I envisioned previously, so I used my trusty scalpel to cut the silicone from between the ears and remove the head thusly. First up, I wanted to use Polytech EasyFlow 60, which is a quick casting resin. Uh, it sets in about half an hour, something like that, so I've got to be pretty quick with this stuff. After pouring it, I decided to put it in my pressure chamber. We've all got one lying around the house. You don't have to use a pressure chamber, but if you don't, you're going to end up with something that looks like this. A big bubble in your head. Now I'm just going to hand it over to me to explain a little bit more to you. It takes about 15 to 30 minutes to set. So it's quite exciting removing the first cast from the mould, especially when it's got your face on it. My big nose is stuck. My nose tends to cause me a little bit of problems when removing from the mould. Turns out, I didn't really realise till I had my head 3D printed, I've got quite a pointy nose, which tends to get stuck on silicone quite easily. So for the second attempt, I decided to use a Polycraft Slow Set 15 PU casting resin, which takes more like five, six hours to set, so you've got a bit longer work time. And I stuck it in the pressure chamber as well. And here, a good nine hours later, you can see the difference. It's more of a, it looks, has a more of an ivory finish, ever so slightly translucent, but doesn't quite seem to have the high detail of the quick set. However, I quickly noticed this symbol on the bottle and uh, decided against using it in the fish tank, although it did feel a bit more weighty. So I went back to the P60 and I did it in a, this time I thought I'd add a variety of pigments. You can see my nose causing problems in a variety of colours. I'd hate to give birth to me. I also tried giving uh, the slow set cast a bit of a wash. You can see here just with a black wash. I even tried doing one in a polyester resin, a polyester ice resin, which is still a little bit tacky. I never have much success with these. Also put it in the pressure chamber so it is crystal clear. You can see there's no bubbles in it here. But yeah, just still a little bit tacky. Then I decided to go really crazy and did a limited edition gold one way through, I thought, I don't know what these would be great for. Drilled a little hole in a rather painful looking position, you can see here. And I decided I'd use those as incense holders. Here's me using a silver spray paint on this one. Turns out spray painting can be quite a relaxing task. Hope you didn't get too much of a fright there, Matt fans. The silver spray paint actually came out a lot better. I like the chrome finish and how it looks. I did feel the gold was more suitable for the subject at hand. After deciding upon my sculpture to go into the new aquarium, I left it sat in a cup of water for about four days, after which I checked it using this aquarium test kit. But I'll be honest, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. So I tested the water the only way I know how by following my keen nose. That's right, viewers. The same pointy nose that had hindered me previously during the moulding process was now paying dividends in the water safety arena. 
I then decided to cut up one of my moss balls and started gluing it to my own face in an attempt to make a beard. Got a bit out of hand with the length, so after sticking quite a bit on, I trimmed it up a little and got it looking a bit more like me. But something wasn't quite right, it was a little too Amish and I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And then I realised I'd forgotten my own moustache. I ended up with this sort of very rugged version looking of me. Now bear in mind, this is real moss, so it will continue to grow. I also plan to grow my own beard in real life and attempt to race the decoration. So I'll keep you updated with how that goes. I wanted to paint the sculpture and give it some kind of a wash, much like the one I'd done previously, which was now making a lovely incense stick holder in my living room. But I didn't want to use any paint. When looking online, I couldn't find a clear answer on any kind of paint that would be safe to use on the ornament in the aquarium. So I decided to get some of the aquarium soil in a bowl and smush it all up, add a bit of water, and then I started nicely painting it onto the ornament. But I quickly realised it was much more fun to simply grab the mud and smush it on with my own bare hands. After washing my hands, I would then use a paper towel to dab off the excess. And after a little bit further tweaking with a paintbrush, a bit more wiping, it was ready to be added to the new tank. Hope Aki likes his new ornament. So Aki wasn't very sure at first, apprehensively checking the statue. But before long, we were getting along famously, with Aki swirling himself around my head willy-nilly. He wasn't the only one to take an interest in the new statue. Here I caught one of the cherry shrimps coming to have a closer look at their new Buddha. Me. Matty. Hello. But he didn't seem that impressed. After about a week of having the breeding box in Matlantis, I decided the shrimp were big enough to release back to their original home. Which doesn't have a name yet, by the way, so if you want to help me name this new better fish aquascape, then please drop a comment down below with what you think it should be. They seem alright. Aki hasn't noticed them, at least not for now. He seems pretty chilled out. And if you'd like to be in with a chance to win one of the five Matty Buddhas that I plan to give away to five lucky viewers, then just drop a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well for your chance to enter. I'll announce the winner when I feel like it. That's right. Good luck. A lot of people will tell you better fish like very still water, and I have tried to cater to that. But it does have quite a big filter at the back there, which swoops down the back. But he goes up and down the back of the tank. He seems to like to let the current take him down, and then you can see him swim right back up towards it again. And he'll just turn around and go back up and down all day. And they're both very impressed with their new decoration. Very impressed indeed. That was a great video today, wasn't it, guys? And uh, if you love great videos, I know someplace you can get a whole lot more of them. And that's my channel, the Matimation channel. So get yourself over there. Bing bong. Press my bell. You can ring it. And you can, if you press that, then you'll be, uh, you, you'll get all the notifications of whenever I upload a new video. So subscribe, like the videos, all that kind of stuff if you know what's good for you. If you want to help support the Matimation channel over here. You can also follow me on Instagram, and that's Matty Mation. There you go. Sometimes I'm a bit late. Uh, but I think it's worth the wait. If you've got any uh, suggestions for my new fish tank, if you've tried, you want to make your own resin statue, or you've got any ideas for any other things you'd like to see me do over here at the Matty Mation channel, drop it down there.
in the comment section. That's where, that's your arena. That's where you get to have your say. If you've had any experience introducing your own religion to fish, drop it down in the comments. I want to know. Thanks again for watching. You've been a great audience as always. For me, Uncle Matty, and everyone else here at the Mattymation channel. But it's mostly me. Mostly, mostly thank you. Thanks from me, mostly. Uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye. See you next time.